the things that I love and hold dear to my heart. They're just borrowed. They're not mine at all. Jesus only let me use them to brighten my life. So remind me, remind me, dear Lord. Roll back the curtain of memory now and then show me where you brought me from and where I could have been just remember that I'm human and human forget so remind me remind me dear Lord nothing good have I done to deserve God's own son I'm so unworthy of the scars in his hands yet he chose the road to Calvary to die in my stead why he loved me I just can't understand let's love our great God roll back the curtain of memory now and then show me where you brought me from and where I could have been remember that I'm human and human forget so remind me remind me dear Lord I guess the besetting sin of Israel was the fact that they just couldn't remember they just often forgot their creator forgot the delivering power of God forgot why they were where they were and what they were doing and why they were doing it and the things that God set in order and God through the man of God and men of God did many things to try to create memories when they came into the promised land God said we need to do two things here we need to come go down in that riverbed and we need to get 12 stones and we need to take those 12 stones and put them up here on the bank somewhere so that they're readily and easily seen. We need to take some rocks from up here and we need to put them down there. And when this water rolls back down, that this miracle uh, of a crossing of Jordan that had just taken place three times that I know of in Scripture, that God rolled back water. It's not a common thing, but three times, that's uh, quite a bit. And, and always uh, working into something new, whether it was deliverance from Egypt or it was the blessing of the promise of going into Jordan or the change of a ministry from Elijah to Elisha. Always there was something that God was so miraculously working. But uh, of course, those stones, unless it would be later when God uh, parted the waters for Elijah both ways or Elijah one way, Elisha coming back. But uh, unless it was something shown there, that's a thought. Those in the, in the water, in the riverbed, would probably not be seen. 
And uh, there are so many things in our experience in God that are not readily seen by the human eye. But God, don't let me forget. Can I get a witness? And then those that were on the bank were there with the purpose of uh, God wanted some questions asked. Something about the nature kids, they're inquisitive. And you know why they're inquisitive? Because they don't know. They come into a world with a blank slate. They don't know anything about this world or its operations. And that's why every mom and dad is blessed with such a tremendous responsibility of that child that obviously first and foremost belongs to God because he's the giver of life. But has been entrusted in the hands of those parents to teach and to instruct and to because that mind's very impressionable. So he said, when your children come through here and they look at that and say, you know, that's strange. I haven't seen that anywhere else. What, what meaneth these stones? What do these stones mean? Daddy, mama, uh, priest, can you tell me what this is all about? And of course, it was a memory. God, don't let me forget where you found me. Don't let me forget what it cost you to redeem me. Don't let me forget that you didn't leave me the way that you found me, that you brought me to this point and you've given me this great opportunity. Can I get a witness? To some folks, this may just be another religious service and I'm just fulfilling my religious duty. But to me, this is another opportunity for me to be reminded and remember, thank you, God. Uh, you've been good to me. I don't deserve being here. I don't deserve knowing what I know, uh, having what we have. Thank you for all that you've done uh, and you brought us this far and there shouldn't be any problem believing you're going to take us on because the best is yet to come and the greatest is before us Ooh, the best sermon is going to be the next one oh yeah the best prayer meeting going to be the next one because it's getting us close now is our salvation nearer than when we first believed Jesus is coming folks how many can believe that thank God he's coming thank God we're confident in that praise God good to have Timothy with us in the house of the Lord so glad he's back with us. We were so blessed to see him pray Sunday night and pray God just feel ever hunger in his heart and soul. It is good to be in an apostolic church. I wouldn't want to be anywhere else, anywhere else, unless it's heaven. Praise God. It's grand to be in an apostolic church. Let's pray for uh, Michaela Altus. This is Elijah Altus sister that has some internal bleeding and I don't know if they know why or not. She needs God. She's in the hospital. Let's believe God to work. Sister Mary Kate needs a touch of healing. David Pierce for healing salvation. Sister Thompson, God strengthen our sister. Continue to pray for Brother Grafton. Uh, John Spencer for healing and salvation. Jacob Spencer the same. Sister Dorothy, God would touch her of the request by an uplift to your hand. We believe in this. Let's talk to God. Father, this is just an honor. It's a privilege you know, to bind together and to unite together. Every one of these needs, every one of these needs, God, you work for your glory and you work for your honor and you work for your praise oh God you're hearing the petition you're hearing the desire you're hearing oh God those that are asking there's only one reason I'd ask of you God is because you said I could receive only one reason to seek of you you said we'd find uh, only one reason to knock uh, and that's it God whatever it takes to get a prayer through whatever it takes to get beyond going through the motion uh, and into that heartfelt realm uh, that we trust in and we're relying upon thank you for hearing us uh, about every sick body, uh, about every lost soul, uh, about every troubled need and circumstance, uh, every miracle that's laying out there to be found through prayer, God. Uh, thank you for it, Lord. Uh, thank you for it, God. Uh, God, that's a proper response of our faith. Uh, it's a proper response of our confidence uh, that you're listening.
You're working. You're moving, God. Thank you for doing these wonderful things. Everybody said in Jesus' name, and there is no other name. Hallelujah. Brother Spence, how you feel? We're wearing you out. This is your hour. Hallelujah. Come right on. And let's worship the Lord. Brother Spence can do it. He can entertain us. But he's not getting up here to entertain us. Let's worship the Lord with him. What you say? Thank you for doing it, Lord. I think I get up here every time and say, gee, and I don't have a clue where to go from here. I, I have a friend, his name is Jesus, Jesus, oh I, I have a friend, his name is Jesus, Jesus, I, I have a friend, his name is Jesus, Jesus, I, I have a friend, his name is Jesus, Jesus, I, I have a friend, his name is Jesus, Jesus, I, I have a friend, his name is Jesus, Jesus, he's the rock that I lean on He's my shelter from every storm I, I have a friend His name is Jesus oh, oh, oh. Let the wind blow Let the rain fall a place that I can go. I, I have a friend. His name is Jesus. Oh, 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 oh. let the wind blow. Let the rain fall. There is a place that I can go. I have a friend, his name is Jesus. I, I have a friend, his name is Jesus. Jesus, I, I have a friend. His name is Jesus, Jesus. He's the rock that I lean on. He's my shelter from every storm. I, I have a friend. His name is Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, I, I have a friend, his name is Jesus, Jesus, he's 
the rock that I lean on. He's my shelter from every storm. I, I have a friend. His name is Jesus. I want you to know tonight, let the wind blow, let the rain fall, there is a place that I can go, I, I have a friend, oh, I, I have a friend, yeah. I that you are mindful of me, that you love me when I call. Is it true that you are thinking of me? mindful of me that you hear me when I call is it true that you are thinking of me that you love me it's a
words, I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. He calls me friend. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. He calls me one more time from your heart thank you Jesus thank you Jesus thank you Jesus oh we love you thank God that this is about a relationship if salvation is anything it's a relationship with him amen make your way to your seats prepare to give this is uh, Tuesday night building fun night so uh, bless the Lord from your heart with your giving while they play in Jesus' name. Well, Satan, I put you out.
according to Paul, the apostle, we all ought to be singing, I don't have a place for you. There's no room here for you. It's either the devil or the Holy Ghost. Don't mix. Well, let's teach about it. Ephesians chapter 4, let's go back to it. Been a little while since uh, Sunday morning. We've traveled a lot of miles. Maybe have a little jet lag tonight. But we got a good God. Yeah, everybody said we got a good God. Now, say it like you mean it. We got a good God. And I know we do. Praise God. Ephesians chapter 4. Let's, uh, let's just read it on through. It's good. First and last and everything sandwiched in between. Verse 22. That you put off concerning the former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt. Everybody said the old man is corrupt. According to the deceitful lust. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And that you put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Wherefore, putting away lying. That's a real good sign. Somebody's got the Holy Ghost. They quit lying. Speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. Be angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down on your wrath. Pretty good another sign that a man's got the Holy Ghost. He gets control of himself. Well, hello, folks. Neither give place to the devil. You know, one thing this is probably telling us right here. There's probably been a lot of lying that went on that was blamed on the devil, and the devil didn't have nothing to do with it. And probably been a lot of attitudes that was thrown out there that they said, the devil made me do it. And he didn't have nothing to do with that. But I tell you one thing, he knows when that happened. And that's his foothold. Neither give place to the devil. Let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands the thing which is good, that he may have to give to him that needs or needeth. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. No corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. No corrupt communication. Didn't leave any room, did he? Proceed out of your mouth. Man, that's, that's the deal. That's the deal. Oh, Brother Perez, he's got that saying. He, you'd be talking, he'd say, what a deal. What a deal. Well, that's the deal. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. If we can get that part down, Pat, according to James, we can be perfect. Man that bridles his tongue, that man's a perfect man. Complete, he's whole, he's mature, he's grown up in God. When he realizes you don't have to say everything that comes through your mind. You don't have to give a piece of your mind in every situation. Pretty soon you run out of pieces, you understand? Then you don't even have a mind. But that which is good now, this is the deal. Not only have we got to handle on this not saying the wrong thing, the bad thing, the unproductive thing, the hindering thing. But we're going to say the right thing. Mm. More than ever now I understand that wise is the man who knows not just what to say. Are you hearing me? Somebody needs to hear me. But he knows what not to say. Not just what to say, but what not to say. That which is good to the use of edifying, that may, it may minister grace unto the hearers whereby. Uh, so here we are. Grieve not the Holy Spirit of God 
whereby you're sealed into the day of redemption. Something didn't come through on that part, but we got it. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the word as we continue your word, as we continue your great truth. Thank you for the marvelous, excellent word of truth that's working in our hearts and working in our lives. Help us, God, to minister grace today to the hearers. Somebody's hungry, God. Somebody's longing. Somebody's not satisfied. We want to step up higher. We want another opportunity. We thank you, God, that, that we can avail ourselves of another opportunity that, that you are giving us in this good word of God. You touch our hearts. You touch our lives. And everybody said in Jesus' name, and you may be seated. And I want to get those last two verses. I had never got down to them, not Sunday are now minister grace to the hearers grieve not the holy spirit of god whereby you sealed to the day of redemption let all everybody say bitterness and wrath and anger clamor here he goes again evil speaking be put away from you with all malice anything that's not got a proper good intent we don't need it and be ye kind one to another tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. There's the catcher. God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. You know, it's a good feeling being at home. Uh, something about preaching at home that's different than anywhere else we preach. We have great times uh, being off and doing the work of the Lord and the will of the Lord. Had great time last week at youth camp. A tremendous, tremendous time, and and uh, I just uh, um, I'd have been glad if we'd got to stream that because I think some folks would have been blessed by it, and we just certainly hearing hearing a lot of good things about it after the fact. But uh, you know, when when you when we're at home, we just feel like we got all the time we need. I'm not talking about just necessarily teaching two hours, but we got all the time we need. But we're not just reaching here in one night service for some quick fix for something. The focus is about eternity. Now, God does do quick fixes, but the focus is about eternity. And uh, so thus, thus we have prayed, God, affect us. By your word, every time, every opportunity that we have with, with that eternal effect, something that focuses us the way we need to be focused. Mm. So how important, how important. Somebody asked Brother Royal Riley one time, said, how come you don't just preach instead of talk all the time? He said, well, I can talk more than most people can live, so I'm just talking so maybe they'll hear me, listen to me. Maybe a lot of truth to that. God bless the memory of Brother Roy Riley. So we got two things here that are, are great. Now, there's a lot of things that go around both sides of this. You saw what the 22 through 26, and then we got neither give place to the devil. And then we got 28 uh, down to where uh, verse 30, grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you're sealed. This is what puts the eternal focus on it unto the day of redemption. And then you got the two verses that we just read after that. So don't give place to the devil and don't grieve the Holy Spirit of God. Now these are polar opposites, right? If I can accomplish the latter, I won't give place to the devil. If I can accomplish the former, I won't grieve the Holy Ghost that God has given me. One rendition of verse um, 27 is give no opportunity to the devil. And that's what Paul was saying. When you are angry, sinfully, you've just given the devil a foothold. What's the understanding? We preached about footholds, right? What is a foothold for the devil? The devil is the ruler of the darkness of this world. 
spiritual wickedness and spiritual darkness are all one and the same. God is light. In him is no darkness at all, right? So when what, what else is considered light in the scripture? The entrance of thy word giveth. Oh, all of a sudden I'm seeing clear. I had a, had a pastor I was talking to just a little prior before church this evening. And he just, he just got off and he said, have you ever seen anything so crazy? What is going on in our world? But he said, what's, what's sad? It's creeping into the church. People just have a hard time thinking right. You know, it takes the same thing to go to heaven. It always has. It takes the same thing to have a shepherd in your life that it always had. It takes the same thing to have a walk with God and a relationship with God. None of that's changed. But the thinking of a lot of people has changed. And he was just, just uh, talking about that, man. It's just, it's just a crazy, crazy hour. So, so Paul said, if you go to Lion, you're giving the devil a place in your life because Lion is sin. Sin is equated to darkness. Darkness is where Satan dwells. He's the ruler of darkness. So all of a sudden, he sets up rulership in your life because you've opened the door with a lion tongue or I've opened the door with a lying tongue. Speaking the truth is emphasized in this Bible over and over and over and over again. What does God mean by that? Don't lie. Tell it like it is. If you're going to say anything, tell the truth. If you're not going to tell the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth, so help us God, don't say anything. Plead the fifth, I guess. Amen. So there, there are a lot of things that, that might give opportunity to the enemy. But all of them go back to a little three-letter word called sin. You know, I didn't come up with this, but Samuel, when, when he was teaching Israel, he taught them that prayerlessness was sin. And you know how he did it? He did it by example. They said, don't quit praying for us. I mean, some folks need to learn, eventually learn, that we pray one for another all the time. We know one another. We love one another. We may not know every detail about, about our our problems or situations working in our life, but, but we know everybody's got certain amount. So we pray one for another. And that's why it's so important just to get that, that, that revelation of, of prayer. When we come into prayer, we come in here, when we get through and we leave out of here, we're trusting we made God happy. Now, I've I got a pretty good idea. If I come in here and just sit on the altar and look around and call that my hour of prayer, God's liable to get grieved with that. That's probably not going to excite God a whole lot. Would that be the, the opposite of grieving God, maybe exciting God? Is there a difference between something that excites you and grieves you? Every parent that's got a child that doesn't live for God knows what it is to be grieved over that child. But every parent that's got a child that lives for God and pours their heart into sincerely living for God knows what it is to be excited about that child living for God. Can I get a witness? So that's, that's simple enough. So in, in, this, in this situation that, that, that Samuel was teaching them, he taught them like this. He said, God forbid that I would sin in failing to pray for you. So what did he do? He just established a little principle there that the response that to really to, to shirk the responsibility of prayer is sin. Had two of them that took that. Got any other takers? Hallelujah. 
So the praying man will stop sinning. And the sinning man will stop praying. I have noticed that and observed that, that it works just like that. So uh, carnality uh, opens a door for the enemy to work. It's an area of dark unfaithfulness, gossip, as we have already heard Paul deal with in two different areas. The, the sins of the tongue gives an open door for Satan to set up housekeeping. Uh, he finds his place in those areas of darkness. The many things that are named uh, in our text. And then there are also I suppose it's proper to call it positive. But there's some positive things uh, that, that are placed there that delights the Holy Ghost. Man, if, if, if lion grieves him, then putting away lion excites him, right? So... Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. Woo. And then the positive part, be kind one to another. Love one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as Christ, God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you for Calvary's sake, for the work of the Calvary's sake, for the blood that was shed there has forgiven us. And called us to be a forgiven people. So we must properly set our attention. God's given us this instruction right here in our Bible. Grieve not the Holy Spirit of God. So what, what's our proper response to that? We purposely work through our lives to not grieve we set things order in our, in, in our life. We do things that we know would be appropriate in our life. And that's all that Paul's dealing with here in all simplicity. He's dealing with simple daily living that either pleases or displeases God. That either closes the door to the enemy or opens the door to the enemy in our lives. I want that door closed. I don't have, there couldn't have been a more appropriate song sung before we, we got up here to teach this than what Sister Sanja sung. I don't have time for you. I'm putting you out of my life. Now, I don't, I don't, have, I don't have the ability to whip the littlest devil that hell has. And you don't either without the Holy Ghost. Praise God. And so, but once we get the Holy Ghost. Guess who's in control? Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. That's the devil, right? So guess who's in control now? We got the Holy Ghost. So it's not a matter of, oh, I'm working on it, Brother Couch. I'm trying so hard. How many decades does it take? I've been trying to conquer this old Irish temper. For 30 years, you ain't tried very hard. I'm just going to tell you the Holy Ghost is bigger and badder than your old temper or my old temper. Mm. Can I get a witness? And you know what we have a tendency to do? The Bible said, make no provision for the flesh. Don't give opportunity to the flesh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, we all know we're flesh. And so we, we have the, 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 the proneness to excuse our flesh. You know, because we've all known that we've slipped up and we've needed to. But a lifestyle is not a slip up. And when we do slip up, we, we ought not just say, oops. And forgive me, God. Now, we ought to do all that. But we ought to be serious enough about this to say, what caused that? What opened that door? What made that happen in my life that would grieve God? That would not make God feel good about me or with me as his child? Don't look at me that way. You got kids. You know you ain't always felt good about them. You can't, you can't be that giddy that everything, oh, I know some folks are that, that everything they do, it's just no, 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 no. And somebody that's wise realizes what you might think's real funny at two. I've seen folks just laugh because their kid lied. They're lying at two and three 
It ain't going to be so funny when they're lying to you when they're 13. Well, hello, folks. Just think it's so funny because they're young and throws a ring-tailed hissy. We had one rule around our house. You throw a ring-tailed hissy, somebody else throws one with you. And always in control. Man, every parent understands that you don't ever correct your children without control. In wrath, remember mercy. That's how our great God is, right? That's how our wonderful God is, right? Clap your hands to the Lord. Oh, yes. So, you ever heard the old saying, if it's worth doing, it's worth doing right. Now, somebody needs to figure out if living for God's worth it, it's worth doing it right. Not sometimes, not part time, not a couple times a year, not just on Sundays. Uh, It's worth doing right uh, seven days a week, 24 hours a day, every day of our life until Jesus comes. Let's live this through. Let's live this right. Let's do this right. Let's be the best we can possibly be through the Holy Ghost. Let's just do it right so who was God talking to here he's talking to us you'd be amazed at folks that get this stupid idea in their mind well when I get there it's going to be all right with God it ain't going to be all right with God if God said I want you tender hearted with your brother or sister God meant I want you tender hearted If I want you to be forgiving and forbearing, God absolutely meant what he, when he said, be kind one to another, not, not just to somebody you think you can get something out of, boy, that's low, but to one another, I realize Brother Donnie's easy to get along with. So he's easy to be kind to. Ain't that right, Brother Andy? Easy to get along with. But then there's somebody else that might not be that easy, but it didn't change the book. Hallelujah. Now we could get into other things, and and you know there's a balance to other things, and, and, and sometimes... Sometimes, not for your sake, but for their sake. You got to be kind enough to set the record straight. And say, look here, that ain't right. Don't give me that stuff. Well, I feel good. How about you? Now, it's an absolute truth that it doesn't matter what you do. You cannot always avoid the devil. He's everywhere. Seems like. He's not omnipresent because he's not God. So, there are times he's not around you. And we're saying he, like, you know, we're really talking about the network, Lucifer's network of demons. I, I don't know how many there are that's not given to us in the scripture but I know that God's angels got them out number two to one I know that that is given to us in the scripture and so if Elijah's servant think he got a revelation let me tell you the revelation we got more on our side than they got on their side We got more for us uh, than they got for them so we can delight in that but more than that we got God And God created the whole bunch of them angels and could whip them all by himself. Hallelujah. So we got God and that's, that's grand and glorious. And, uh, but you you just can't always avoid the devil, but you don't want to leave your back door open for him. The devil's going to come around and he's going to tempt you. If he tempted Christ, if he tempted God in a human body, He couldn't have made him sin. He said, how you know? Because I know he's God. I got a revelation. 
and God can't sin. And you can't separate God's body from God's spirit. God became a man. He didn't just indwell a man this time. He became a man. So the devil wasn't going to make him sin because he can't make the Holy Ghost sin. That's who Jesus is, the Father with a body, the Holy Ghost with a body, the one God with a body. Oh, I like that. Man, I love that. So if he tempted Christ, we're not going to miss it. Don't you fret your little self. When you became God's child, you became Lucifer's enemy. And he's got this network set up. And we get enough understanding from the scripture that we're not to be ignorant of Satan's devices. And he's walking about, going to and fro, Job said. Peter said he's walking about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. He knows where you live. He knows what house you live in. He knows the kind of clothes you wear. He knows if it makes God happy when you put it on or it doesn't. He knows what you listen to in that house. He knows what you talk about in that house. He knows. He's got it all staked out. You know, it was kind of a little deal like this. Gig in your face, devil. Uh, <clears throat> Have you noticed Job? He's perfect. Whoa. He's upright. He fears me. He turns away from evil. He don't play around the tree. He don't play with the temptation. He fears God. He eschews evil. Have you noticed it? Oh, it's rubbing Satan bad. It's getting him really bad. Yeah, I noticed him. You got a hedge round about him. I can't get to it. So I want us to get some understanding about that. Satan doesn't have free range in our life unless we open the door. God's got us protected unless we open the door. Now, will he allow us to be tempted? Sure. We're going to be a proven people. Will he test our love for God? Sure. Thinking not strange concerning the fiery trials that are to try you. What's that about? Because we're going to be proven. We're not just going to say we love God. We're going to prove we love God. We're not just going to say we live right. Uh, we're going to prove we live right. We're not just going to say God's important to us. There's the test that's going to come in our lives uh, that's going to prove that he's number one. He's more to us than anything else. And until it's proven, it's just rhetoric. Well, hello, folks. And so here's the, the enemy. You can't always avoid him. And he's a bully. Never could stand a bully. A bully's low down. You hear me? They talk about this, this cyber bullying that goes on. Kids, just numbers, the stats are amazing. They commit suicide. Some of them bullied at school. Some of them just, just bullied on social media. That's why wise folks don't fool around with social media like that. And teach their kids so. But I just want to tell you, Satan is a bully, and he'll bully you if you let him. I got in a few fights coming up. I didn't get in a lot of fights. I didn't like to fight. What that one fellow said, man, I'm a lover, not a fighter. But one of them that I got into was uh, 
somebody jumped on my younger friend and whooped him. And they were bigger and badder and older. And I come up on it. And I said, don't do that. Wouldn't quit. And said, I finally said, uh, you know, if you're going to pick on somebody, just come on. Pick on somebody closer to your own size. Hmm. Tell the devil that if you want to, but I'm going to tell you, I know how it turns out. The fight's on. You're going to have to prove you mean it. Little buddy, I hope you know after this, these scratches and bruises, because I loved you and I cared for you. I may care for your brothers and sisters. I mean, it upsets you when the devil jumps on them. Now, we can't, we can't always fight each other's fights. I realize that. You can't. Every one of us got our individual things that were proven in our walk with God. That's why you don't want somebody else to do your praying. You, they can't do your praying. You do your praying. That's why you can't live off of somebody else's walk with God and experience with God. You can't, you can't ride mom and daddy's coattail to heaven. You're going to have to live for God for yourself. You're going to have to have a prayer life for yourself. You're going to have to love God for yourself. You're going to have to live holy for yourself. You're going to have to be righteous for yourself. You're going to have to apply that word of God, every word of God to your heart and do it for yourself. And when you get that revelation, you get that understanding, you're on your way to perfecting in God. That word perfecting synonymous with maturity. You're mature. You're growing in God. And it is very, very important. So he'll bully you if you give him an open door. He'll torment your mind. He'll torment your spirit. He'll tell you every stupid thing he can come up with. He'll try to to cause you to, to figure out how bad you are. And the devil, his rules are never fair. He'll come to you. You give him half an open door, and he'll say, go ahead and do that. Now, you know you've been taught better than that. You know the Bible's against that. You know that God's not going to be happy about that. But the devil's there. If you give him place, what'd we say? We don't have a place on this shoulder. There's no perch here. We don't, we're not wearing a saddle on our back. Amen. No place for the devil. But he'll tell you, oh, God doesn't mind. It's not that bad. Go ahead. It, it ain't that much to it. And if he ever gets you to listen to him, when he gets you on the other side of that, he starts telling you how sorry and low down you are, and you ain't never loved God anyway. You ain't never been right. You ain't got a chance of going to heaven. Look how bad that is. He don't play fair. He's got one thing in mind, uh, and that is to destroy those that he can. Now, I don't have any medals to pin on the devil. I don't have said this years ago and followed through with it. No, no, nothing to brag about the devil. Never made me anything, Brother Kellum, but what? Sick, sorry, and disgusted. Not one good word for the devil. It's not God that divides homes. uh, It's the devil that divides homes. It's not God that destroys lives. uh, It's the devil that destroys lives. It's not God that puts false things in the mind. That's why we need that renewing all the time. God will deliver somebody from drugs uh, and the devil saying, well, you can have a little bit. If you just do a little bit, you're better off than you used to be. No, you're right back where you was. You don't taper off of sin. You get delivered from sin. You're set free from sin. Uh, You come out of sin. Uh, You don't just get halfway out of that pit. Uh, He brought me up also out. Uh, He's an up and outer God. Uh, He'll bring you up and he'll take you out uh, of that horrible pit. It's just the way God works. 
and the glorious way that God moves. James 4 verse 7, submit yourselves therefore to God. First out of the bag. God, how you want me to live? Lord, what you want me to do? How you want me to do it? Submit to God. Get full of this word. Get it in your heart. By now, everybody ought to be able to quote Romans 12, 1 and 2. I've had folks that said, well, we've done it so long, I just read on down through the chapter. I got all the chapter now. Get it all together. That's good. Because it all plays off the 1 and 2. Thank God for it. Thank Waking up every day saying, hey, God, my first order of the day. Here I am. I present myself. A living sacrifice. Holy. My life's going to be holy today. My life's going to please you today. You're going to be satisfied with the way I walk. You're going to be satisfied with the way I talk. You're going to be satisfied with where I go. You're going to be satisfied with the way I dress. Whoa, didn't just decide that when I met the tempter today. I decided that when I got up this morning. I decided that 54 years ago, but I redecided every day because that's important. Romans 12 was not talking to sinners. And he was not trying to get sinners to get full of the Holy Ghost and get baptized in Jesus' name like all sinners ought to if they're going to go to heaven. He was talking to saints. And if you got a revelation of how God ordered the shadow... And the type, you realize, sacrifice. Now, there was a high priest that went yearly into the Holy of Holies, but sacrifice was not a yearly thing. That yearly deal was a Calvary deal. That yearly sacrifice was looking to the cross. That's what covered the whole thing. But there was daily sacrifice. There was a morning sacrifice and there was an evening sacrifice. Let me tell you something. God, you got me when I get up in the morning uh, and you still got me when I lay down at night. That's the morning and evening sacrifice. Uh, Sacrifice and offerings, uh, blood of bulls and goats, uh, Old Testament style, that's only type and shadow. Thou wouldest not, uh, but a body. Now I realize that body he came in for the sacrifice for all humanity, but this is another body that he wants. Present your bodies a living sacrifice. It's morning and night. It's every day. Submit yourself therefore to God. Resist the devil. And sometimes you'll win. Sometimes it'll come out all right. The devil would get frustrated and eventually mosey off. He'll flee from you. Let me tell you, the devil knows who's living for God. And he's not a bit as scared of every one of us or any one of us. But he trembles over that God that's in us. And he knows folks that are the temple of the Holy Ghost. He knows folks that are full of God. He knows everyone that's prayed up and everyone that's on fire and everyone that means business and everyone that's sold out. He knows every living sacrifice uh, that is before God. Are you hanging with me, church? Uh, Submit yourself, therefore, to God. uh, Resist the devil. I feel that. Uh, And he will flee from you. Uh, Let's put him in his place. Uh, Let's put the devil under our feet. Uh, We don't have time for you. Uh, We don't have time to pet you around, uh, nor your sin, nor your propositions. Uh, We don't have time for you. For you, uh, we got to do something for God. Uh, we got to shine a light in a dark world. Uh, we got to live it like God wants it lived. Uh, we got to do it like God wants. Oh, go ahead and give Him praise, church. <laughs> Resist the devil, and He will flee from you. Yes. Woo! Not sometimes, not part time, not every now and then. Every time. Every time. Well, the preacher said last night, the devil's a liar. 
stole Brother Jones's text, I guess. <laughs> That's all of our text. The devil is a liar. Always been a liar. Can't tell the truth. Truth's not in him. Yes. First Peter 5, 8, be sober, be vigilant because your adversary, the devil, your enemy, the devil, the one that hates you, the devil, as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Heard it quoted yesterday. They missed that one word, seeking whom he can devour. There's a difference. You know, I don't always use good English, but I've been taught good English. Come up in school when they used to teach stuff rather than the all-important critical race theory. That English teacher wanted you talking right. And every now and then when I say something like, uh, where you at? I think, boy, she wouldn't be happy. Mm -mm. That, what is preposition? Doesn't, that, that, that at don't belong there. Where are you? At? No. English doesn't make a difference. Miss so-and-so, can I do such and so? Well, I don't know. Can you? Did you come up here to find out what abilities you had? Or did you come to ask permission? Because if you come to ask permission, it's Miss so-and-so, may I? This devil, let me tell you about this devil. He's seeking whom he may devour. Because God has got him on a leash. God is never out of control. There may be things we don't understand. Maybe things that are sad and disheartening. We're seeing those things take place in our country today. But particularly, he wants the church. The gates of hell wants the church. Particularly, he wants you. He wants your place in the church. Because your place in the church is to be the place that gives glory to God. And that's what he wants. He wants God's glory in the church. That's New Testament doctrine. And so this, this deal about, well, anytime the devil gets ready, he can just come jump on you. Oh, no, 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 no. Anytime you get a black envelope with your name on it, you can be real sure it's went across God's desk. The second thing you can understand about that, I don't care how black it is, somewhere in there, there is a silver lining that says all things work together for good to them who love God and to them who are the called according to his purpose. Ah, uh, yes. So, seeking whom he may devour. Yeah, I've noticed, Job, I can't touch him. May I? I can't get to him. Don't have the ability. You got a hedge around about him. Let me tell you something about God's hedges and the devil. He can't get over them. He can't dig under them. He can't get around them. Oh, hallelujah, Holy Ghost. I can't get to him. But if you let me. I can make him curse you to your faith. Boy, he lied. Didn't he lie? Let's get on with this. Seeking whom he may devour. Verse 9. Whom resist. Second time we've had that word tonight, right? Submit yourself therefore to God, James said. Resist the devil. He'll flee from you. Peter said, he's out there. You need to be sober. You need to be vigilant. That's what you need to be. Don't let him catch you in a bad situation. Don't let him catch you playing church. Be sober. Don't let him catch you being half-hearted about this. Let me tell you something. You don't go to heaven by halfway living for God. 
Never will a preacher preach this Bible the way it needs to be preached without preaching here, O Israel. The Lord, our God, is one Lord. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy might. Uh, Jesus said, heart, soul, mind, and strength, when he come along, it takes everything. You don't do this half-hearted. And I'm going to tell you something else. Somebody better get this. The church has a lot of things for you. God through the church has a lot of great things for you. You can find everything you need if you're willing. The peace of God is in his church. The strength of God is in his church. The joy of God is in his church. Happy is the people whose God is the Lord. But you're going to have to quit this stuff that says, hey, the world is supposed to revolve around me. No, our world revolves around God. Our world revolves around church. Uh, it's not about me. It's not about give me. It's not about what everybody can do for me. It's not about me, 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 me. It's not all the prayers coming this way. Uh, I need to be praying for everybody else. Uh, it's not about all the sacrifice coming this way. I need to be sacrificing uh, for others. Uh, it's not about all the love and all the concern and all the care and all the phone calls and all the, oh no. I need to be reaching out uh, for somebody else uh, and letting the church uh, and letting the world know uh, that I care. I want to do something for God. Uh, I want to be used of God. When your life is so wrapped up in you that it's all about, you know, you you can get some folks together. Well, let me tell you how bad it is for me. That ain't nothing. What about this? Well, you're not going to out nothing, they're nothing. That ain't nothing, nothing, nothing. When it's all about, hey, get a grip on life. Uh, It's a good life living for Jesus. Uh, It's a good life being full of the Holy Ghost. Uh, It's a good life coming to church uh, and knowing your sins uh, are forgiven uh, for his namesake. Uh, It's a good life loving him every day uh, and reading his book every day uh, and talking to him like the friend we sang about uh, tonight uh, every day. You'll never have a friend like Jesus. Help me, Holy Ghost. What I'm telling you is there's not enough resisting going on. If it'll help anybody, well, let me finish reading this out because this will help them. Whom resist steadfast in the faith? Lucy, old buddy, just transgendered him. Let me tell you something, Lucy. You don't have control over this no more. It's the Holy Ghost and I. Whom resist. I'm not talking your filth no more. I'm not talking your doubt no more. I'm not talking your unbelief no more. I'm not murmuring your complaints anymore in the presence of a good God that's too good to hear that. I got too much to say thank you about, to complain about. I got too much to say hallelujah about than to get caught in that situation. Whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions uh, are accomplished in your brethren uh, that are in the world. Whatever you're going through, uh, humanity's going through. That's how life is. uh, And that's what happens to humanity. But uh, the God of all grace, uh, who has called us uh, unto eternal glory by Christ Jesus, uh, after that you have suffered uh, a while, the sad thing about this world, Uh, when they're through uh, with whatever life deals with them uh, and they haven't uh, given their all to God uh, and they're not living for God uh, and it's all been about them uh, and they didn't know where God should be in their life. It's so different with us uh, because it's all been about God uh, and after you have suffered, after you have suffered a while, uh, God's going to make you perfect. Uh, He's going to establish you. Uh, He's going to strengthen you. Uh, He's going to settle you. Would it help to know 
that great things happen when you suffer in the will of God. Wonderful things are accomplished when you suffer in the will of God. I'm not making this up. This ain't a cunningly devised fable. I got this right out of the Bible. Let's hit the other side of this now. Everybody said resist. Everybody said resist and resist. And we have the ability to do that. And when we do, that just means we're slamming doors in the devil's foot. We don't have a place for you. No. No, that's the old man. That's not the new man. That's how the old man used to do it. We don't do it like that no more. We're slamming doors in the devil's face. But there's another side to this that works hand in hand. So not only are we not giving place to the devil, we're not grieving the Holy Spirit of God, whereby we're sealed unto the day of redemption. So 1 Thessalonians 5 and 19 says, can you guess? Four great words. Quench not the spirit. Quench not the spirit. Holy Ghost, have your way. Holy Ghost, have your way. Devil, you're not having your way. The Holy Ghost is having his way. Devil, you're not doing your thing with me. The Holy Ghost is going to do his thing with me. Quench not the spirit. Thank God for the power of the Holy Now, if you don't resist the devil, you're going to quench the Holy Ghost. You notice... Quench not the spirit. Is there anybody here that likes to be ignored? You try and tell somebody something real important, at least you thought it was important, and then you find out about five minutes into the conversation, two or three minutes into the conversation, let's shorten it, a minute or two in the conversation, that they're not even listening to you. They don't have a clue what you're talking about. Nobody likes to be ignored. And I got an idea. The devil don't like it either. But I like ignoring the devil. But God don't like it either. And when God prompts us, when God quickens something to us and we put God off, If God's really priority in our life, I know you've got some important people and situations with people in your life that if they called on us, we'd do our best. If my pastor called me right now and said, I need you here as fast as I can get there, as you can get there. All my plans for this week just went out. I'll be there. Hallelujah. And you know exactly what I'm talking about. And so one, one, situa- one circumstance in that deal is, you know, I love Brother Jones, Sister Jones. And I appreciate the years of our friendship that has uh, been many, many. But the other thing is, I know. You know, there's some folks that just call, they holler wolf about anything. Brother Jones don't holler wolf. When he said, I need you now, there's, I don't even have to ask for an explanation. I don't even have to say what's going on. Because that would have never happened if he didn't need me right then. You understand where we're at? So... Nobody likes to be ignored, though, but it is especially wrong to quench the Holy Ghost. This, this little, these four little words sandwiched in with several exhortations. One of them is, we're getting ready to get off here. We're not near about through, but we've come a long way down the road, haven't we? One of them is, the first one, verse 16 says, Rejoice evermore. Evermore. Every more. More every. More ever. Rejoice evermore. What's this simply saying? At all times. 
Now, this don't mean bad things are happening to you and you're jumping up and down giddy. This just means that we're always in the position of knowing who's in control of our lives. God, you're in control of my life. And somewhere in this, I'm going to find it to rejoice. Somewhere, somehow in this. Everybody say, that's contrary to the flesh. If you notice how much stuff in this Bible is contrary to the flesh. Then it said, pray without ceasing. We've taught you, taught you well. That does not mean pray 24-7. That means don't ever give up. We're praying every day. Sometimes we're praying multiple times a day about the same situations. It's, it's, this is saying the same thing that Jesus said when he said that men ought always to pray and not to faint. Don't quit. Well, he didn't answer. Well, I didn't quit praying. Yeah, the answer's on the way. This I know. Jesus said it. I believe it and I know it's so. All right, so pray without. Everybody said that's contrary to the flesh. And everything give thanks. It's been pointed out, God only knows how many times. He didn't say for everything. He just said in everything. Thank you, Lord. How do you give thanks? By praise, by prayer, by just absolutely saying thank you, Lord. What did Job do in the greatest trial of his life? worshiped and how did he worship the lord gives and the lord takes away blessed be the name of the lord he tried to teach his wife a little bible class how can we receive good from the hand of god and we just lovey dubby with god because he's doing us good and we can't receive evil also when something bad comes first thing we want to think about is now it's always good to search in adversity you know you, you examine yourself, and the wise man told us about that. that that's always fine, but, but we don't go into this deal because, well, God must not love me. When, when did they rewrite this book? God must not care anymore. Listen to me. When did they rewrite this book? God always loves and cares. Thank you for still loving me. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hey, woman, you just need to understand, we, we, he's God. And if he wants to do us good, thank you. And if he wants to do us bad, thank you. He's got our good in mind, regardless of how it's looking to us. Would you clap your hands to the Lord? So as Job Declared and showed us in example, thankfulness is both word and action. Word and action. Everybody said that's contrary to the flesh. Then he said, quench not the spirit and a whole bunch more good things that come after this. Despise not prophesy and prove all things. Hold fast to that which is good. Abstain from all appearance of evil. Mm, that's just keep living truth, keep living good, keep resisting the enemy. You can't turn a deaf ear to God. Somebody's coming to help me on the piano and stay right with God. Catch it? You cannot turn. How many times does God have to tell you? Prick your heart. He said, Saul, you're kicking against my pricking. And it's hard for you to kick against the pricks. What are you talking about? Somewhere through all that, he was persecuting the church and given authority to even kill Stephen. Somewhere in there was some saying, that ain't right, Saul. He was going to become Paul. But somewhere in there, it was saying, something ain't right about this picture. Something ain't right. He got it all turned right when he said, who are you, Jehovah? And Jehovah said, I'm Jesus. That's the simple revelation. Heads bowed for just a moment. I know it's Bible class. 
You can't turn a deaf ear to God and stay right with God. You can't turn a deaf ear to God and live right. You can't turn a deaf ear to God and stay on the right path. When you start quenching the Spirit of God, you can no longer quench the fiery darts of Satan. You can't do it. When you start saying no to the Holy Ghost, drawing back from the Holy Ghost, quenching the Spirit of God grows into grieving the Holy Spirit of God that's in our text. The Holy Ghost in your Bible was likened unto a dove. That was one of the signs that John the Baptist saw. The Spirit descending in the form of a dove. Tender, gentle, non-intrusive, He'll knock on your heart. He'll woo you. He'll pull at you. But he'll never force you. This experience in God, this relationship in God that causes you to push the devil out of his place in your life and only hold room for the Holy Ghost. This will never get a hold of you unless you want it unless you seek it unless you're violent enough to take it by force unless you're willing to press your way through doesn't 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 happen the other every man presses his way into it I realize the Holy Ghost can come through strong. I realize the Holy Ghost can convict strong. I realize that this Bible depicts Jesus as both a lamb and a lion. But let me talk to you about this dove. Not one person will be in heaven that God forced to go there. Not one person will God ever make them love him. the crowd to be in our heart today have I been treating you Holy Ghost because there's two things that I'm aptly taught in your Bible to not do with you don't ignore you and don't grieve you and the first will certainly cause the last is he pleased with me in any situation in any circumstance the number one question ought to be will this please God because that's going to settle it for us. Is he pleased with my dressing, with my walking, with my talking? Is he pleased with my attitude? Is he pleased with my prayer, with my time, with my efforts, with how I treat his presence? Lord, I am concerned about what you think. The Holy Ghost is talking to somebody. I just feel it as sure as I'm up here teaching this Bible class. And and, and, and I'm, I'm bringing it home. Altar's open. It's searching time. It's reaching time. Everybody doesn't love the church. Everybody doesn't care about the church. Everybody doesn't love truth. Everybody doesn't care about truth. Everybody doesn't love preaching. How do you define love? I think one of the greatest ways to define love, it just simply says, I care. To the extreme. I care. Everybody doesn't love preaching. Everybody doesn't love God. Everybody doesn't love the man of God who tells the message of God. But they could. I'm just telling you they could. You can't do it and be in love with yourself. You can't do it and be wrapped up in self. That's the old man that's got to die. That's the carnal man that's got to die. Love is more than a word. Love has got to be more than a word. Don't We can't just tell God we love him. We've got to show God. By never ignoring him. 
to the greatest of our desire, never want to grieve him. My little children, let us not love in word, and the connotation here is alone. Let it not just be in what we say, neither in tongue what we speak, but let us love in deed and in truth. The true test of a man's love for his wife and children is not what he says, it's how he provides and what he does. That's his position, that's his responsibility. I want to make them as secure as I can. I want to help them to have food to eat and clothes to be clothed with and a roof over their head and 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 to try to make them happy with that. A woman's care for her husband is not just shown in the words that she says. It shows up in the house that he gives her to live in. And the way she cares for that. The way she does her home duties. I know this is a mixed up world and a lot of duties are twisted around. But it comes down then, how do we show our love for God? And it's so plain in the scripture. Just obey me. Right living, faithful praise and fervent praise and worship in God. It's, it's never about what songs being sung or not sung, nearly as it is what reality is in my heart. If it takes a song, thank God for the songs. We sing and make melody in our hearts. We sing one to another. We sing to the glory of God. Thank God for the songs. I'm not making light of them. But, but if it takes uh, just a certain song, uh, no, no, no. It's what's really down there, and it's going to come out. Any opportunity that you give us, uh, any opportunity that the door is open, and I got to let you know, God, that I love you and I appreciate you. Let me tell somebody this, and I'm through. We can't always help what we see and hear in the world. It's just there, and it presses us and vexes us so often every day. But we all can do something about what effect that it has on us and our relationship with the God that is in our life. Oh, one of the greatest things that can ever happen in a child of God's life is when they realize the benefit of honesty and honest confession before God uh, that is a Bible doctrine uh, and the place that we can go and get help. God has set some orders in the church uh, and you can get help, uh, but you got to want help. Uh, some folks thought they didn't get help uh, and it wasn't the problem with the help. Uh, the problem was their own situations that they brought in their life when they ignored the help after help and the warning after warning and the care after care and, and they just quenched it all and did their own thing. I'm talking to somebody. Be honest. Confess and get help. And we'll be back to talk to you about the things that grieves God and the things that creates love in a relationship with God. Talk to him. In Jesus' name, let's talk to the Holy Ghost.
Can we lift it from our hearts to God? Right where you're at, lift it to the Lord. I surrender. Yielding our all to God. Don't ever let God be an offense to you. Lord, and we never want to be offense to God. Let's sing it again as we stand and lift our hearts and hands to the Lord. Lord, I surrender. Giving up. I feel like right there God's talking to somebody. How about it? Are you going to do it? Give it up. Make me what you want me to be. Whatever you want out of me. You can't have that and be what God wants you to be. You can't do that and be what God wants you to be. Surrender. Thank you, thank you, thank you for being a very great congregation tonight, helping us preach, being attentive to the word of the Lord. We just got a heart full of desire to help somebody through this end time. And everybody said, amen. Let's pray for our missions. Father, it's our pleasure and our privilege that we do this so continually in our lives. You're blessed, God. You know names that I call before you just about every day, Jesus. To see you bless them, strengthen them, help them. God, they're facing circumstances. Many of us are not facing them. You help them, Lord. You work on their behalf. You minister to them. You let them know that prayers are being made. and People care for sacrifice that's being given. God, as you reach for souls and use them to reach the lost. In your lovely name, Jesus, amen and amen.